All right, we get straight into tonight's four sports focus segment. Now, every once in a while, ever so often, or a matter of fact, not, not ever so often, as a matter of fact, it's more like once in a while, something comes along, an event of some sort comes along that just grabs the attention of everyone worldwide. It grows and grows and grows and continues to grow until it blossoms into something so large that it's absolutely amazing. And Trinidad and Tobago are about to be the birthplace of one of those types of events. We're talking about a Caribbean Football League. International stars, local stars, football at its greatest. And with me today, I have two of the organizers of the event, two of the brain children behind the event, Mr. Chris Anderson and Mr. AJ Debar. All right. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks, all right. Now, first of all, tell us the Caribbean League football exactly. What is it? How is it, how is it going to work? Well, it's, it's, it's going to be made up with eight franchises to begin with, with the kickoff in 2016. Um, it's going to be pretty much a nucleus of Trinidad players and most of the franchise with marquee players, internationally well-known marquee players and a lot of um, international stars who are not really marquee players but basically are will talented players to fit in and help grow our local talent to the next level. All right, now the league, how did this concept come about, uh, Mr. Debar? Where, where, what is the, the you know? I think um, as Chris has been a past player, and you know, and there's a historical significance how football in this country has been at a certain level. And I think in a legacy concept, Chris has always said that when I'm ready to uh, leave my legacy, I want to go back to the country of my birth mm -hmm. and grow it into something even bigger. And, and that's something that will set the platform for years to come. All right, so let me make sure I get this right, Chris. We're talking about world stars, the likes of, of players like, like Didier Drogba and, and players who are unknown worldwide come into Trinidad and Tobago to play football? Well, I don't want to leak the names yet because we're still in contractual mm. negotiation, but I can tell you players who were really on the top of their game, mm -hmm. well-known international players, and that's, that's what I would like to leave it with right now. All right, now, in terms of the event itself and, and how it's going to work, how is it going to happen? How is it going to come about? What are we going to be seeing? Is it games once a week, three times a week, twice a week, once a month? What's going to happen and where are these games going to take place? Well, everything's going to be focused here in Trinidad on Fridays and Saturdays for a three-month period from May until August. And that is actually the league component. Then we have a caravan, which actually will travel to the different islands of the Caribbean and basically will get the showcase off of uh, Trinidad for the cup concept. All right, so people are going to be able to come to these games every Friday, every Saturday, and see some of their favorite players, international players, just knocking ball in Trinidad and Tobago. That's right. I mean, I mean, there's, there's a great concept right now with, you know, you have the Pro League and the Super League, and that's got the domestic component already intact. What we're doing is during that break that's in the season, we actually have all these superstars coming from international and, and most of South America for the foreign content, but mixed in with the domestic players that are already here in Trinidad and Tobago. That'll actually help them raise the level of their game and go back to their club teams when their season starts again. All right, now, Chris, this has been compared to one of the biggest events I think the Caribbean now knows about, and even internationally, as a matter of fact, that's the CPL T20 tournament has been compared to that, something that is going to be that big in its prime. How do you feel about that comparison? Well, it's, it's, it's a good place to start, and, and nonetheless, it's a, it's a very good place to start. But, you know, it's two different concepts, two different business mm -hmm. concepts. But as far as, you know, reflecting on the players' talent or what have you, I think we will take it to another level. I think the football in itself have its own fan base, which is far beyond what cricket could ever become in, in, in this part of the universe. But, you know, as, as it relates to what the crowd would be able to expect, I can tell them that they're in for a big show. Undoubtedly right. so. Now, one of the problems Trinidad and Tobago um, football or football in Trinidad and Tobago faces is you might find the men in the household and even to extend sometimes probably their, their sons, their, 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 their boy children will love the football. They want to go and take in a game of football. But the wife studying, well, if we go, what are I supposed to do? What your daughter going and do? All you're going and sit down and watch football. What are we, what are we really going and do when we go there? Right, right. So how, how you plan to, to deal with something like that? Well, well it, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's basically a festive type atmosphere we're trying to create, a real carnival. Look, the Caribbean is very unique. 
And, and, and one thing, one of the things that the CPLT20 realizes that what they are basically benefiting from is who we are in the Caribbean, how we like sports. I mean, we go out there and we, we, we fantasize the, the winner, we, we support our players, and we go out there in, in great numbers. I, in, in, in drafting the whole uh, proposal, the business plan, what we actually did was to include, you know, a family type atmosphere. We're a family of four, a family of five. We're fathers, and you have an 18-year-old, a two-year, two 18-year-old, and you have, in that family bracket, you have two kids that is five and seven or three and four, that kind of thing. We have a, a, an area where we'll be dedicated for uh, where peop the kids will be able to have fun on their own, well-supervised, you know, with great security and that type of thing. So people will be able to come out with their family on a, on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday and, and enjoy the game, father and mother enjoying the game, and the kids just having fun at the back. Having a time. Having a time. A family affair, bringing football back to the family pretty Exactly, much. exactly. All right, now, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, for, for my part, I think we really need something like this in Trinidad and Tobago, something to bring back that, that positive vibes. I mean, these soccer warriors doing what they can on an international level, but supporting club football and, and bringing that positive atmosphere on club football in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, grassroots football sorry, is, is something that we could really do it in the country. Yes, yes. I, I think this, is, this, this league will help grow that. And, and, and what you will have, I mean, where the Super League are right now and where the Pro League are right now, the, it, 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 it is talent. There's a lot of talent there. There's no doubt about it. But we need to, to create an environment where we can, you know, develop, harness that in, in a sustainable. This is, what it, this is what it's about because football is big business. But you have, to, you have to be sustainable with it in order for it to grow. And this is what this league was going to bring. We are going to embrace the Pro League and embrace the Super League and community football overall. We are not here to do anything other than to take the football to a next level. Now, I'm a Trinidadian, so I'm very, very, very passionate <laughs> and I'm very, very protective of that. <laughs> I know, Mr. Debaz, as a non Finbegonian, um, why Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, I'm sure a business model like this, an event like this, could be had almost anywhere in the world. Yes. Why Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, for me, as someone that's, you know, done a lot of my work in Europe and in North America, I think Trinidad is probably, to me, from a layman's standpoint, an untapped market. I think the wealth of history and just what football means to this country is something that hasn't been platformed to the level that the rest of the world is actually working at right now. And you know, I, I think things are great the way they are, but they can actually be enhanced. And I think enriching the programs with the youth development that helps the national team, you know, get a pool of players that can actually help qualify for the next World Cup, that's the objective here. And for myself, and when Chris and I talked about what the design should be, the goal is one thing, qualify for a World Cup, which means you've gotten to the pinnacle of football in the world. I uh, know from what you've seen in Trinidad and Tobago so far, the people, the vibes, the atmosphere and that kind of stuff, what do you really <laughs> foresee a, a, a game night looking like? Well, I foresee a fete. I mean, it's got to be a party. That's what the culture loves and embraces. And, you know, as someone that only, you know, has heard about what Carnival really is, is I think that should be the benchmark for what we need to make sport and the festivities. And, you know, I, I'm very look, I'm looking forward more than anything to actually see what it's going to be like when people come for an all-inclusive ticket and want to actually come for a community gathering as opposed to just the sport that's on the field. The product is going to be unbelievable and out of this world, but what everyone's going to come for the party aspect, they're going to look forward to it every year. All right, well, the party aspect is always the fun part, but behind the scenes, we have the business aspect of it. How is this going to work up? We're going to have what franchises? It's just going to be how, how are the teams going to be named? How are they going to be decided upon? That sort of stuff. Well, we have a team of people that is doing a lot of research right now. We have some names that we have thrown in the pool, and you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of you know, a collective thoughts. Mm. Um, you, you know, you have to include the youths. Mm -hmm. You know, the youth of tomorrow. I mean, they must be must be included in, a, in, in in a venture like this. So we have a pool of people that is doing a lot of research coming up in names that you know will be will be fun to 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 pronounce and 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 be proud to be part of for example i like the name um you know trinidad oilers you know because trinidad is oil mm -hmm. but my research team may not like that name <laughs> so i have learned now after sitting with these guys and then for a couple of weeks and a couple of months now i'm saying no mr anderson i think you better leave us you know mm -hmm. let us let us do this truly right. so i have to take the seat back and let them let them do that uh, and to allow them to be part of the whole thing and i think we're going to have from a, from a marketing perspective i think we're going to let um, as AJ was trying to convince me that we should have a contest, you know, suggestive names and so forth. So it may come down to that. You never know. All right. You never now, know. one of the problems uh, 
football has seen on a grassroots level in terms of growing the football from the lower levels come up is that attachment to community. Um, you find some of the, the, the pro league and super league clubs, what they've done now is really cement themselves, try to really cement themselves in a community so that the community could get attached to it. For example, when you look at like Guaya United and Club Sando and that sort of stuff, um, how does this, how, how this event, how will it tie into the communities? Well, I think there's various ways we can tie into the community. Uh, one of, one of, one of the, the ideas that we have from a marketing standpoint is to, is to actually get all the, the youth, um, all the schools in the various, in the various community, um, adopt them, um, associate, associate the entire project with, with the various schools. Um, the secondary schools is a, is, is a perfect way to start, you know, because we have youth development, we have reserve, the reserve, um, the, academy. The, the academy teams. Um, there's various ways we can do it. And again, we have specific, uh, we have experts in those areas who will be part of that. So it is, it's a holistic approach that we are taking to make this thing successful. All right. Um, now, I know it's not just the players. It's not just about marquee players. It's also one level above that, the marquee coaches. <laughs> Tell us a bit about that, AJ. Well, I mean, there are legends that we grew up with, you know, from every generation, whether you're a generation now that's only seen the recent World Cup or you've seen something from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Um, there are legend players that have retired and either become coaches or there's existing celebrity coaches. Part of what the program in Trinidad and Tobago is supposed to be is to enhance the level of performance. And that comes from a wealth of knowledge as well as the skill you learn on the field. And so, you know, when Chris was talking about raising the profile of football in this country, one of the key factors was is let's bring in international flavor to the coaching regime and also include the domestic as well. Um, but let's bring in celebrities that actually people respect and value their, you know, history and, and what they've accomplished, as well as being taught what to do in the field um, for this program. So, can't name names now, but uh, we're getting ready to go to Europe after we finish here in Trinidad, and we're signing on some names that are pretty big heavy hitters, and people will be excited just to come out to see them alone. All right, now, we mentioned all these marquee players, we mentioned marquee coaches. Right now, people are already thinking about seeing somebody like Jose Mourinho or somebody <laughs> coming to Trinidad, you know? They, they're thinking yeah. of the names, the Gus Poyes, the all these other uh, retired yeah. players and coaches and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. When could people expect to be a part of this fantastic event? Well, we're scheduled, we're scheduled to, ha to host a series of um, combines and, and um, tryouts in, is it March or February, April? February, March, April. Yeah. Okay, no trainees on carnival. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> I was right telling after. them that you know. I've learned Ash Wednesday. Yeah, it's the venue definitely <laughs> after carnival, you know. But um, just to just to touch back again on the on the legend, what 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 we have found out, what I know for a fact, being a former player and, and playing on the highest level in the international scene, I, I find that uh, you know you look at the NFL, you look at the NBA, and you see you're always seeing the inclusiveness of past players, legends, not only in color commentary, but in other areas of the sport, assisting the sport, developing, yeah, technical you know, advice, whatever yeah, I mean, assisting, assisting the younger players in the game with the various franchises. That is something that we have considered and we have, you know, committed in, in, in exploring. I, just today I was having a conversation with one of the great players, one of my idols, the only man basically to beat Pelé twice in the NASL and score is Steve David. The young generation don't know who Steve it is. Steve David has been a king in, in, in North American soccer yeah. and is one of the pioneers of, and he has agreed today with me to, to be a part of this with, with other of the other legend players that play the game, Warren Archibald and all these guys that we want to get involved because these guys could bring something to the game and help harness some of the talent there. Because we have, when, long, when, when last we had a player like Leroy Dillion, the closest we have seen to it is, is the little magician. Mm -hmm. Well, we need more of those. So these guys could be part of it, and, and under my watch, they will be included going forward as part of a, what we were setting up is a selection panel mm -hmm. to, to, to select the players, you know, recommend the players who will be part of the, the, of the pool right, in the draft. Fantastic. So great news, fantastic news. Something is coming to Trinidad and Tobago, and you need to be ready. You need to be ready.